since 2007, one man has dared to expose the sinister power players on all sides of the phony political spectrum. Armed with over 30 years of research knowledge of the paranormal, government conspiracies, geopolitics, secret and ancient societies, the esoteric arts, and much more. One man's quest for knowledge has become a mission for the enlightenment of all people. Broadcasting from the Conspiracy Ground Zero of Dallas, Texas, this is The Global Reality with your host, Josh Reed. Yes, indeed. Welcome to another edition of the broadcast. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. This is the Wednesday, November 20th, 2019 edition of the broadcast. Here yet again for another show with you. So thanks for tuning in and being with me here for another edition of the broadcast. I've got some various news items and whatnot to get into for you here on the show tonight. So I'll do my best to get into everything I can for you here tonight. Um, Let's see here. Right out of the gates. Let's see what I'm trying to see what I wanted to get into first. Hope everybody out there is doing well. Uh, listen, before we get going here, um, I wanted to tell you about our, our fun, where, where we're at as far as our fundraising efforts for the month. Last week I, on the show, I told you about the goal that we had for our we every week we have weekly goals that we have set fundraising goals small amounts towards our total monthly goal ideally what we need to be hitting is about half of our total goal by the middle of the month it's now already the 20th of this month and uh we've gotten very little in and so now i'm i'm pretty much sitting on zero here folks and i've got to keep the internet on this week and the, the electric i've got to keep on next week so um, I told you last week I needed about a week to work on the film and not have to worry about doing the fundraising thing. I didn't get that opportunity. I did not get that because we didn't get people to contribute. Um, so, you know, here we are again. And, uh, you know, I, I, I get, I, I'm not going to continue. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to continue to deliver shows and, and, and continue just to, to get up here and deliver free information and, and not get anything in return for it. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm sick of working my ass off and all I'm asking for in return is just the bare minimum we need to, to keep everything going every month. So, um, again, like I said, we're, we're back. We didn't reach our goal for last week, so that's got to roll over into this week. And like I said, we've got stuff coming up due this week and next week now. So, uh, we've got to have a minimum of a hundred dollars in here in the next 24 hours. And, uh, that increases our total, amount for the week we had so we're carrying over last week's amount we didn't reach that goal um oh wait 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 take that back hold on okay so we get 200 uh short is what we came up for last week so okay so 100 okay i got i got that wrong i apologize uh so 200 from last week and 200 from this week is our total goal for the week so uh, 100 by tomorrow minimum is what we need and then um, 300 by friday total is what we need so i've got something coming up uh special for you guys on friday that i'm planning on doing weather permitting yeah it's one of those things um i've got a special i'm going to try to do they were forecasted to get rain so i don't know how that's going to affect things if it's going to be raining I, obviously i can't go out and do it but uh If weather permits on Friday, I will be doing a special. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done one of these. I've been planning to do this for a couple of weeks, and then, of course, I saw the forecast. I'm like, God damn it, it's got to be fucking raining on the one day I want to do this on. Um, but I'm planning on doing a special broadcast from Dealey Plaza on friday which is of course november 22nd so 
uh, pending we get to some support that we need the support that we need this weekend pending where the weather is good then I'll be doing that um, I just I hate when we miss opportunities to do things uh, just from lack of funding we missed two opportunities to do stuff over the past uh, last month and this month because uh, you know I put it out on the show I asked people to support so we could do this nobody stepped up so you know we don't get to do it and it sucks you know I want to do special things beyond just doing the shows and making the movies and stuff I want to do. But, uh, you know, if we don't have funding in the, the budget to go out and do these things to cover the, just the minimum cost of, you know, uh, the car trips and everything they cost to do that, just the expenses that I can't go and do it. One last month was the, uh, I want I told you, I want to go get a table at that, uh, alien con they were having here in Dallas, which subsequently, which is pretty funny. They, you know, I've told you they never invite me to stuff like that, but yet I got hit up by a ton of people who were in town and, and who were actually presenting at the, at that alien con here in Dallas back in October. And, uh, I got hit up with so many people by so many people who wanted me to give them rock wall information, who wanted me to take them to places to see the wall, which I've told people a million times. You can't fucking see it. why in the God's green fucking acres. I can't believe I still have to explain this to people. Why on God's green fucking acres would I have been trying to have a fucking archaeological dig out there for the past 10 fucking years? If you could just go out there and tell somebody where it's at. It's buried under the fucking town. It's buried way, way, way down underground. The only way you can see is by excavating. You can see little pieces and stuff of people, but that's it. The people pulled out of the ground over the years, but that's it. But my point is I get hit up by all these people. And I, like I said, you know, I hate do for me, I'll do for you. I don't mind, whatever. But they, no, no, I try. Oh, well, can you get me in? You know, can I? I'd like to go there, and you know, they they don't want to. They want you to do everything for them. They don't want to give you anything in return. Uh, so I didn't get to do that. I wanted to go and film that and film some of the the retards that were going to be there. And then speaking of retards, they were also had the uh, this past weekend they had the flat Earth conference that I told you about that, uh, that Alex Jones talked about. I don't know if he was there or not, but, uh, he was supposed to be there. Anyway, I was going to get a table and go cover that. And it, you know, we need to have the money to do that. So <coughs> it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, these opportunities for, for things pop up and then, uh, but it's, it's funny to show you, because they wanted hundreds of dollars to get into that flat earth festival. Isn't that hilarious? But I was going to just go get like a table there or something. You know, it wasn't very expensive. Maybe a hundred bucks or something. Anyway, I'm planning on doing this uh, special broadcast Friday from Dealey Plaza if the uh, weather permits. And uh, if it's if it's raining and shit, I'm not going to be able to do it. I, I can't go out there in the fucking rain with gear and get it all wet and all that shit. So, um. That is the plan, though, for now. Um, but really, uh, we just need everybody stepping up and contributing everything you can in, in whatever amount you can this week to our overall fundraising goal. I'm, I'm sitting on almost zero right now. And, uh, you know, like I said, I need just like a week not have to worry about fundraising, not have to worry about doing shows uh, in order to be able to complete Spellcaster soon and be able to get that because I've, I've, I've had to work on other things and uh you know work on other stuff just to try to keep my head above water and keep everything going so you know listen you know we need we need more than just what we've been getting in that's my point you know um i'm grateful for what we do get in i'm grateful that we you know barely manage to scrape by every month but we need more than just scraping by folks you know what i mean I, I, trying to work on on these films and having, you know, nothing in the kitty to, to operate with and just keep everything going is you, you can't do it. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of people, listen, I, I never noticed this until somebody pointed it out, but man, I got a point. I got, I do have to point this out. A lot of people leave comments and stuff on my YouTube channel. A lot of these people leave comments and a lot of them make, you know, they act like they're my biggest fan in the world and stuff. And, and they pump me up and see all these things. But, but those people never contribute. Most of those people never contribute anything. 
And I find that kind of odd. I never noticed until somebody pointed it out a few months ago. And I really didn't agree with them until I started seeing it happening. And I was like, you know what? The people who said that were actually right about that. It's frustrating. It's frustrating when people leave comments and say, oh, I'm going to make a contra. I hate this. I call them claimy claimers since we've had them the whole time. We have them for the whole entire duration of time periods I've been on air. People will claim, make public claims. Oh, I'm got, you got a big donation coming. And they do that in a public way and do it in a comment or whatever. And then other, they know that they have no intention of contributing. None of these people that ever make these big claims ever contribute anything. That's a frustrating thing. If you're not going to contribute, hey, just don't contribute. Don't make big, wild fucking claims about, and it's happened so many times. If the, and I used to think it was just people being flaky at first, but no, it's not. It's not people being flaky. It's, it's a part of the fucking psychological operation. They do that in a public way, and somebody sees that and says, oh, well, this person's going to uh, obviously going to come through and contribute a big amount, so I don't need to worry about it. And then, of course, that nothing comes. That person who made that claim disappears. You never hear from them ever again. You see what I'm saying? Um, it, it, it's it, like I said, it's enough to deal with the bullshit I have to deal with just from the uh, sheer fact of, of doing this and trying to expose these motherfuckers. And, uh, you know, I don't need to have to battle the listening audience, too. You guys should not be the people I, I shouldn't be having to to be at war with you guys, you know, just to get you guys to contribute to my work and what I'm trying to do, because I'm floating out here all by myself virtually. And everybody else out there are clinging on to their phony sides. And, you know, just like this is Epstein stuff, you know? Yeah. I, I think the whole way that the, the whole memes with the, Epstein didn't kill himself thing. Yeah, it's cute. And yeah, ha ha. It's funny. We can all have a laugh about it. But I hope that, it, and it just sucks because a lot of people that are out there are buying into the psychological control element of the meme of Epstein didn't kill himself. And they're not trying to, it, they, they, people have no interest in truth. They don't understand this thing is designed to further conceal the truth. It's just like I told you from the very beginning. They want to change. They want to control the narrative. See, they were hoping. They tried the chicken sandwich. They tried, you know, all these other attempts. The impeachment stuff. They've done their goddamnedest to get people to do what they normally do about this kind of st uh, about anything about any issue with the Epstein stuff, which is to move on to the next thing and forget about that. But people haven't done that. So it's forced them into a situation now where they've had to come out with new information and come out with new things and make more moves to further try and solidify their narrative. And the narrative now isn't that he, you know, the narrative should be this motherfucker's death was faked. But yet the, this counter, the counter narrative thing they're trying to spin is this idea that oh no he's dead he was killed but he didn't kill himself because first they came out with the stuff saying it looked like he was you know didn't look like the injuries were concurrent with the suicide more like strangulation and that whole thing and then now uh there was a report of his brother coming out and saying you know he wasn't uh he wasn't trafficking women and he didn't kill himself. Yeah, this is it right here. Jeffrey Epstein wasn't trafficking women and he didn't kill himself, brother says. So now the, the, the counter narrative is that they're trying to get people to buy into. That's what the whole Epstein didn't kill himself thing is. It's, it's not about the truth coming out. It's about them trying to continue to sell you the idea that he is indeed actually dead when he is not. And to try and pin all of this blame and everything completely and totally on the Clintons and, and the Clinton kill count and all that. that. I mean, you motherfuckers buying into that, meh, 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 keep on meh, all the way, motherfuckers, because that's what they fucking want. You're buying into their shit. That's exactly what they want you to do. You think something like this just becomes a meme and becomes a, a thing unless they want it to be? No, it's a controlled narrative. And they're continuing to try to do that. And that's why they're continuing to try to 
bring out all this new stuff they could have brought out when all this happened. No, they're choosing to bring it out now because people haven't let it go. The conspiracy theories have abounded from the very beginning. And the real fact of the matter is, I mean, I mean, this is, folks, people, you wouldn't believe how many people have faked their deaths. I mean, fake, faking someone's death is much easier than murdering them in actual fact. But they'll tell you the other way, or it's the other way around. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's endlessly frustrating to see people continue. And then those people will think that they're, truthers or they're searching for the truth because they bought into whatever narrative they've been sold this guy didn't kill himself and he wasn't and he wasn't murdered okay it, that's what it should be more it shouldn't be the meme shouldn't be epstein didn't kill himself it should be epstein isn't dead that should be the real narrative here but of course, since they know that, that's where they they continue to try and play into that that side of it. I don't know if you guys saw this. I posted this on uh, the Global Reality Facebook page a week or so ago. Uh, it's interesting. It, it just continues to be interesting, especially with the stuff. Uh, if you haven't seen my five-part, nine-hour mystery Hollywood series. You can get all five parts in the download shop at 10 bucks each. You can get a pack that has all five of them in it for only 40 so I highly suggest you get that. If, you, but, you know, if you're going to get that, you should also probably just go ahead and get the full download collection box set out of there also. But uh, You might remember, if you have seen that series, the information that I covered in that series pertaining to the uh, Griffith Park Observatory. And interesting, when you consider the subject matter of that five-part mystery Hollywood series that I did, is that, uh, and by the way, if you haven't seen that and you you're just being a cheap ass and you don't want to buy it, that's your loss, not mine. That's all I can tell you. You're missing out on some fucking killer information all because, you know, you'd rather, you know, have beer money and Fortnite money and all that than to actually support and, and get information you're not going to get anywhere else. I'm not fucking around here, ladies and gentlemen. There's a reason that I've been here for this long. And there's a reason why they keep me suppressed you know, they fucking try, try to keep me. I mean, they, they, they uh, not that I was ever making, only making like 200 bucks at maybe every couple of months off of YouTube, but, you know, a few months ago when they uh, completely demonetized my channel and, you know, and it don't allow me to, to even make anything no matter what, you know, even if I have a video that gets millions of views, they will never let me make any money off of it, no matter how get how how big it gets and no matter how much I grow my my channel, they continue to keep me. You know, you can't none of my stuff. Even if you subscribe, my stuff doesn't pop up in your in your news feed and your suggestions and all that. I make it extremely difficult for people to find my stuff. And um, you know, I'm I'm not a right winger. I'm not an alt writer. I'm not somebody who's uh, go look at my channel. I've never put out anything hateful or anything. Um, that would violate terms of service, but they have continued to treat me and my work. And there's only one reason they would ever do that because they know that I'm a real threat because I am not attached to any political party left or right. And I expose all sides. And that makes me more dangerous than any of these other controlled left and right clowns. I talked about the Griffith Park observatory in there. They've, uh, they posted a, there's a trailer out. Uh, and this is another thing that pisses me off. It pisses me off that they continue to mine. I mean, you Hollywood people, are y'all are just morons. You continue to mine shows like mine and others, and you continue to mine the, the conspiracy world for information to make your films, but yet you guys never want to fucking help out the people who've been talking about these things. I'm sick of it. 
I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing myself. It's happened a couple of times. It's not bullshit. There's been a couple of characters in movies that have been based on me. And yet they, you know, they don't want to ever give any credit to the real people. They base. I mean, you motherfuckers should be hiring me as a consultant. That's who, that's who the fucking, you don't want to make a real conspiracy movie, Hollywood. You should be hiring me to give you the fucking shit that you need to make movies out of. <laughs> Blow away any of these other garbage you're putting out, but they're coming out with a fucking Mandela effect movie now. You guys see that preview of that? It looks really, really low budget. And uh, even the CGI looks like 15 year ago CGI, but uh, what I found interesting is considering the subject matter is that there's a reference to the Griffith Park Observatory in the trailer for this Mandel Effect film. Now, now considering again, if you, this will only really mean something to you if you've seen my five-part mystery Hollywood series. And if you have, then you'll understand why that's so interesting. They would put a reference to the Griffith Park Observatory in a film about the Mandela effect. This is a live action, you know, feature film. And apparently it has something to do with, with like a, a false memory or something, which I think is, if, if, if I'm being honest, I think that's 100% what the whole Mandela effect thing is. I think it's 100% based on on false memory. But um, just the fact that they the, the Berenstein Bears thing was always weird. I thought that was a weird one. But there is, you know, with all the stuff that I uncovered with uh, about Griffith Park Observatory and you know, the, the interdimensional elements of that and time travel elements and all that stuff. Very interesting. They would put that reference in the trailer for uh, the Mandel Effect film, which is forthcoming. I don't know when it comes out. Everything we know about Disneyland's Mysterious Club 33. As Disney fanatics know, Disneyland's Club 33 is legendary. The exclusive venue with pricey membership fees and a wait list that's rumored to take years is just beyond the crowds on Main Street, USA, tucked away near the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in the park's New Orleans Square. Walt Disney himself first imagined the club as an upscale place where guests can dine on elegant dishes. Well, it was supposed to be, you know, hence 33. It was supposed to be for uh, basically the the... the a place where they could get the elites could get away from the profane, essentially, it was really what it was imagined as an upscale place where guests can dine on elegant dishes and sip fine wines after visiting the executive lounges at the 1964 World's Fair. Since Club 33 opened in 1967, a few months after Disney's death in December 1966, it's been somewhat of a mystery. Now, a piece of it. A door plaque that reads Club 33 is one of more than 1,500 pieces of Disney memorabilia. Who cares? Here's about some plaque. The price would be a bargain compared to the reported cost of membership in the real life Mickey Mouse Club. In an October 2019 story for Punch Drink, journalist Aaron Goldfarb wrote, that once a guest has made it to the top of the year's long waiting list, they still need to pay initiation fees. Initiation fees. Isn't that interesting? Somewhere around $25,000 with $10,000 owed annually in dues. The Los Angeles Times reported in December 2017 that the price was even higher with an initiation fee of $50,000 and an annual dues of $15,000 a year. Admittance to Club 33 is hard to come by, as indicated in a 2012 post on the official Disney Parks blog, which then announced that a number of new memberships were available, although it was clear that they weren't easy to attain, unless, of course, you happen to be one of its celebrity members, reported to include Elton John, Tom Hanks, and Christina Aguilera. And I'll add another one to that list for you, Joe Rogan. That was another one that... Uh, 
Kevin Smith out him for. I remember it was, it was like the second hour in Open EMP show a long time ago. I've talked about it before. But Kevin Smith talked about on there about Joe Rogan being a member of Club 33 and him going there with his family and stuff. And I got more on uh, Tom Hanks coming up later, too. This opportunity will initially be offered to those individuals who have been on the Club 33 waiting list. A Disney employee wrote on the blog spot of the blog post, an interest in capacity are evaluated as interest in capacity are evaluated. Those not currently on the waiting list may be offered opportunities to join. The do Disney parks po- post details, the perks that come along with the entrance to the clubhouse. New club 33 members will now enjoy exclusive sneak peeks at park enhancements and new attractions and the availability to use VIP tour guides itinerary planning services, valet parking, and complimentary hotel upgrades, blah, blah, blah. Life on Disney fan Maxwell Glick, who's visited Club 33 more than once as a guest of a member, confirms that Club 33 is unlike anything else. He first sat in the location a little more than a year ago and returned within the past few months for a birthday dinner with his parents. Um, and, and, you know, who knows how much of the... Uh, how much of the I mean besides having 33 on everything there and the plates being adorned with 33 and all the rest of that it doesn't I mean who knows I always heard that there's the public membership to this place and then there's the secondary non-public place and that what really goes down in there doesn't like it's you can go in there when the park is open. And if you're a member, you can go in there when the park is open. But I've also heard that the real secret meeting stuff, because the reason why they did this initially, why they put this in there, they, they sell it as it's just this thing where, Oh, you know, it's an exclusive thing and you can get wine in there and you can drink alcohol and whatever else. And Oh, it's for rich celebrities. And, and but really it's a, it's original, intent this is why i was inside of a fucking theme park because when theme parks closed think about it you know there are people want to meet in secret at, at places out or you know somewhere out in public you know if it's at somebody's house or if it's in a building you know there could always be possibilities that somebody could be there and see what's going on but if you wanted to have a meeting a secretive meeting of elite people without the worry of, of anybody hearing or seeing people there, this is a perfect kind of thing. So the narrative that they've spun over the years is that, well, yeah, it was originally intended for that, but no, that doesn't go on any more bullshit. This all, all this public stuff, and even telling, if they didn't want, listen, if they didn't want the people to know this existed, they could very easily have kept it a secret. But, uh, They've they've continued to do this publicly, and I think meanwhile you probably I don't know how much of it they still utilize whoever, but fucking I mean Disney's fucking evil. They're fucking evil, pure evil. Fuck Disney right in their dirty shithole. Sorry if you're a Disney fan, they're just pure evil. What else? Conservatives seek to stifle new alt-right movements steeped in anti-Semitism. Now, this is a bullshit shill article if I ever heard one. Again, another narrative they're going to try to sell you. <coughs> these, <coughs> excuse me, these, they want to try and act like the, the, that the alt-right is separate from Trump and that the people who are within the Trump administration don't have those bullshit. And how do we know that? We know that because, well, my audience knows that. We know that because of three little fucking letters, don't we? CMP. That's right, motherfuckers. Because I was telling you about that. I'll never forget, man. When I first started uncovering the, the, the white supremacist connection to the CMP, this is like 2009. I was talking about this on radio on a radio show, and I had no idea that some of the people that uh, were... 
uh, at the time I had no idea that some of the people that were on some of these networks I was on at the time were into that kind of stuff. And I'll never forget that when I started focusing in on the white supremacist connection stuff and the connection to like the, um, oh, what's the name of that? The Turner Diaries and all that stuff. And start exposing all that and the connection to the CMP. Well, I, I remember that's when people really started getting scared. And that's when people really started. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, it's no other way to say it. Conspiring against me. That's what happened. I conspired against and got pushed off networks and everything else because everybody was fine with me exposing the CMP stuff until I started exposing the white nationalist element of it. And, uh, and then people didn't, didn't want to touch it anymore. Didn't want to touch me anymore. So don't let them fool you with this horse shit. Okay. These guys share the same ideology. What they're trying to do now is they're trying to throw the more open elements of the alt writers that, uh, you know, are either you know, a lot of them are a lot of them are spooks and plants anyway. I mean, yeah, you do have some people legitimately believe in those things, but most of them are just spooks and plants and feds and everything else anyway. But um, they're now they're trying to, to to create. Oh no, they're they're not with us. No bullshit, bullshit. But they're again, they're trying to put up this. Pu- it's it's election. It's coming election time again. So of course they're trying to separate themselves. And the fucked up thing about it is, is those people, the large amount of those people are responsible for getting Trump elected. And now they're trying to separate themselves. And it's exactly the same way. I mean, how many times, you know, Jones bragged about being in with the Trump administration. How many times has Jones had uh, Trump on since he was been elected? Zero. Because he did the same thing. He used his audience to get elected and then now attempted to separate themselves. Oh, he, you know, because of his Sandy Hook stuff. Same thing they're doing with the whole right winger stuff. But these guys are all in bed together. That's what the CMP at its heart really is. Besides being a CIA front organization, obviously. But it's a way. That's why you have all these various different people who don't seem to have much in common other, other than they have an R next to their name and they're Republicans. That's what it's all about. Those meetings are all about coordinating the operations within the all the people that are members within the compartmentalized structure. It's very compartmentalized, just like the CIA and the intelligence agencies are. There are You can be in the CMP and not know the whole entire overall agenda. That's absolutely, positively, 100% the case. They've got tons. That's how they keep them, themselves going. They've got tons of members who pay the dues and pay the yearly fees, and they get themselves a nice, because it's a 501c3 tax exempt organization. So they get themselves a nice tax deduction, and that's really all they care about. Not everybody in the CMP, regardless of what people might tell you, not everybody in the group has any idea of all of the larger agendas that they're trying to do. They are compartmentalized as anything, just like the CIA, just like the agency is. But when you have these people who tell the group what the agendas are, then you get people to get on board with that. And people are getting on board with these ideologies and with these agendas that are coming down from the highest levels of the intelligence agency, and they go along to get along, and they don't even know what they're, they don't even know they're doing it. Then you have another separate group of those people. That's why you, and I discovered this when I first started approaching people back around uh, 2008 and 2009, when I first started going and approaching, I would go to these different uh, events and approaching these people and, and talking. That's why I've talked about many, many times while you'll get such varied responses from people within the group. You'll get people who, oh, yeah, I'm a member. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. And they'll, they'll openly talk, but then others that will run from you, deny it, run from you, scared. Why is that? Why, why would that be? Well, it's exactly like I told you. It's because you have some people who are not even aware of, of the larger overall agenda of the group. And then you got others that are definitely involved in that. And it's not fucking hard to see, ladies and gentlemen, that the ones who deny it and get pissed scared when you bring it up, Paul Craig Roberts, I'm looking at you, cocksucker. Uh, Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, I'm looking at you, cocksucker. 
who was the other guy? Dr. Michael Kaufman. Alex Jones had, <laughs> had him featured prominently in his 2007 film Endgame. He was a former president of the CMP. Jones still denied he had anything to do with the CMP, right? That motherfucker, yeah, he was not happy when I came up and asked him about it. And that's really why I wanted to, to ask him. He, he, you know, that guy's a president. So those people that are in the, that's why you had the people who are in the higher up levels of the organization are the ones who are the most CIA connected. And that's when I knew 100% when Jones put Dr. Michael Kaufman in his film Endgame, that's when I knew, oh, well, this, I'd already known, you know, but that was the, the nail in the coffin for me as far as Jones went. And well, well he's 100%. Because not only does he have him featured in his film, he's, you know, he lets him spout his particular agendas and all that. And when you go back and you look at the even the initial documents when the CMP first started, it's rife with. I mean, that's why you've got people like Edgar Nell's a prince, uh, Eric Prince's parents, who were both admittedly. It's not a conspiracy theory. You can go and confirm it. They were both admittedly CIA, and they were on the board of governors, just like Doctor Edward Teller, father of the hydrogen bomb. He was on the CMP board of governors. So the people that are at uh, the higher most echelons of the group are the ones that are 100% doubling as CIA agents and working on behalf of the Central Intelligence Agency with their involvement in the Council for National Policy. And this is exactly why you've got Dr. Michael Kaufman. He didn't want to talk about it at all. Who, what, what, was it Corsi? Uh, Corsi was the one when I went up to him and... and uh, you know, of course, now we know about his connection with Russia and all the rest of that stuff now. But at the time, that wasn't really a known thing. But I, I, I mean, he was totally open about it. Oh, yeah, I'm a member. Sure. Yeah, great group. I mean, he was willing to. He was chatty Kathy about it. Which is interesting because. He kind of goes against that idea, you know, that uh, it seems to me like the most high level people, are the ones that are saying option about it. I, I, I just assume that course he's pretty high level connected, but that just goes to show you how m many levels there are and how you can have somebody like Corsi who's clearly connected to very powerful, but there's levels above him. That's, that's the thing. There's there's and this happens in, in not only in any of the, it happens in any of these groups, any of these things, the happens in the CFR trilateral commission, any of these groups, there's always a sort of a, uh, See, there used to be uh, like an internal, there was a smaller group. I talked about this group years and years ago, try 10, 11 years ago, I first talked about this group. And I think they, they're they probably, I don't know, they probably, their name, they've probably taken on a different name and they're now defunct probably. But there was another one of those groups within the CMP that was actually the ones for uh, many years, many several decades through the 80s and the 90s and probably early, into the early part of the 2000s uh, that were really running the whole show as far as the agendas in the Council for National Policy, that was a group called the Arlington Group. But, uh, and you, you know, you had people like Falwell and stuff like that in there. But I think most of, if I'm not mistaken, most, if not all, those people that were within the Arlington Group are, are all dead. So, um, you know, whether that group has continues on and in serious, it, it's highly likely that probably some other people took over the Arlington Group and because of its secrecy as being sort of the the power structure within the CMP grouping, uh, it very well could still be around, but it, it more, more than likely probably took on a different name. And Anyway. <coughs> Fringe group of far-right activists has been disrupting conservatism and pro-Trump events in recent weeks, drawing rebukes from mainstream Republicans who are eager to separate their party from white nationalists and alt-right racist right. And these, you know, these are the very fucking people that helped get him elected, and now they're throwing him under the bus. And, uh, again, it's all bullshit. And they know it's all bullshit. But they have to do this in order to try and, uh, listen... 
you know that I'm not one. We, I've talked about these fucking crazy predictions that people make every other week about a, a false flag and this, and it never happens. And somehow those people get to keep their credibility and keep to go, keep getting to keep make money. And YouTube lets them make money off super chats and all this stuff. I mean, it, it, it's again, the people who are, they just create this phony thing. Just like I was telling you about Dan Blitz Aaron and all that. All these guys, man, whether it's Joe Rogan or Dan Blitzer or, or Alex Jones, all there, it's all smoke. It's all smoke. There's nothing real about the, those number of, of, there's a reason why those guys have that many followers. It's all smoke. And it's there intended to, to make it, to create this perception that other people who don't have those numbers or whatever, well, their information is lesser. And if they, if they were right about the things they talked about, if they were right about the things they discussed, if they were right about the information they put out, well, they would have those numbers too. It's a complete horseshit bullshit argument. And it's a false perception that they try to get people to buy into to try and create this phony perception where somehow the amount of likes and views that you have equates to worthiness or equates to effectiveness or, or equates to knowledge it's such horseshit and um you know they listen they control the whole game <clears throat> they've controlled the game forever they can they they you know they were going to let the internet go on as long as it did without doing something about it that's why they started going at all that stuff. Like I told you from the very beginning with the old deep platforming, Alex Jones saying that whole thing was bullshit from the very beginning. Cause it wasn't about affecting him or anything else. It was about giving them the pretext to be able to change the algorithm, to be able to deplatform people. It was never going to be people like him who are making millions of fucking dollars lying to you and fear mongering. You It was never going to be those people. It was going to be people like me out here scrapping, trying to get the real truth out to people and trying to fight the disinfo. It's one thing, you know, I used to think when I first got into this, I thought it was just all, all about, you know, putting the truth out. That's not what it is. Never, I, I, I was naive. I thought that's what it was. No, not for me anyway. For me, it's, it's from day one pretty much that I started this, I had to take on this role of not only trying to, to get the truth out there, but to have the double job thrown on top of it of exposing the bullshit out there that's posing as truth. I never thought I was going to have to do that. Never counted on that. But again, as like I said, I don't go about making predictions, but I'm telling you, I, I, I believe that those things that Obama put in place when he was in office, the continuity of government stuff, you know, the stuff where they legally gave themselves the right to suspend elections in the event of a national emergency. I, I believe 100% that, uh, that something like that's going to happen. I, I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong, and I'll eat crow and admit I'm totally wrong. But I think it's at least a distinct possibility that we don't have an election, a president, that there is no presidential election next time. And that they will stage some sort of event, which I'm sure they'll blame on. They'll say is, you know, Clinton conspiracies and left wing conspiracies and whatever else. Um, and that they did it and it was the Clintons. But I, 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 I don't doubt that there will be some sort of event at some point that will they will use as a pretext to suspend the elections and uh, in order for them to try and keep whack nut fucking lefty liberals from overturning Trump and uh goddamn I you know again I I I I I don't know what's worse I mean I if you think one is worse than the other or better than or one is better than the other you're delusional you just got your head up your ass that we're we're fucked way beyond that there is no good guy or bad guy we are 100% against up, up against nothing but bad guys on all sides. Nobody has our best interest at heart on either side of this. So it's not a victory. You know, if they get Trump out of there, it's not a victory. But is it, but on the flip side, but it also is it, is it the defeat we're being told it is as well? 
I, I, I just don't see them not staging something and attempting to do away with elections in general. I don't know. We'll see. That's going to get crazy, though. That's uh, that's one thing. A battle for the jet stream is raging above our heads. Yep, I've been telling people this for 15 years. That's what the engineered climate change shit with chemtrails has been all about. That's what they've done. That's been one of the major things is the manipulation of the jet stream to control the weather. And that's exactly what they're doing here. They've been doing it for years. Let's, well, let's read a little bit of this article and see what bullshit they try to feed us, shall we? The Northern Hemisphere jet stream crossing Cape Breton Island in the maritime provinces of eastern Canada. Oh, why would you do that? Why would you put that in the same font as the, as the article to make, when it's just a fucking description of the picture? When prolonged periods of severe weather strike, two things often get the blame these days, climate change and the jet stream. While many have expressed concerns that the rapidly melting Arctic is now di- disturbing the jet stream. Oh, really? That's what they're saying? I didn't even know that. Beep. Fucking dummies. Oh, global warming's melting, melting the Arctic ice. No, that's causing the jet stream. It's affecting the jet stream. Yeah. And pumping all those fucking particles up there with the aerosol spraying campaigns. No, that's not doing it. And, 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 and pushing that those particles, barium infused particles with electromagnetic ionospheric heaters like HARP. I just can't even stomach this shit anymore, y'all. It's like when you when you've known the truth for so long, when you really know it, it like it, every year that goes by it becomes harder and harder to just tolerate any of the shit. You know, when you've done the research and you've done your homework it, it's just harder to tolerate this shit. And that's another big problem. Is people just aren't doing their own homework anymore. That's a big problem. That's a big problem with my audience too. Look, if I put something out on my show, okay, it's up to you to go and prove to you yourself whether or not what I'm saying is true or not. Okay. That's not my fucking job, motherfucker, to spoon feed you info or to me to, to prove to you with what I'm saying is true. No, I've done my homework. I've dedicated my life to this. But you're lazy and you don't want to do your homework. So you want me to do all your research and homework for you and give you all the proof to back up. No, motherfucker, that ain't my job. I do my own research, okay? I do my own homework, and I have for decades. And when I get up here and tell you about a piece of information, it's because I've vetted it, I've researched it for many, many years, and I know what I'm talking about it on. If that, if I say something and it doesn't jive with your belief system, the responsibility is on you to go and research those things and find out for yourself whether they're true or not. Don't come at me and go, you talked about this on this show three years ago. And it's like, I, I can't remember talking, you know, what I talked about a month ago. I don't have time to remember about what I talked about because I'm too busy remembering all the things that I've fucking learned in my research. You understand? I don't have time to remember some topic I talked about six months ago. If you hear me talking about something on the show and it's counter to whatever bullshit narrative you've allowed yourself to believe, the responsibility is on you at that point to do the research and do your due diligence and find out for yourself what the truth. It's not on me. I'm not, I don't get up here and work backwards. See, a lot of people do that. A lot of people work backwards from trying. Those people are called shills. When they work backwards from the premise and try to convince you why their premise is correct, those are called shills. That's why when you watch any of my documentaries, and it's another reason why dummies don't get my documentaries is because I don't, number one, spoon feed you the information, and I don't, number two, try to work backwards from a premise and convince you what I'm saying is true. That's how most of the documentaries are. They start out with a subject, then they spend two hours or however long the documentary is working backwards from that premise, attempting to, to <clears throat> convince you while their standpoint on whatever topic it may be is the right one. I don't do that. I never have. I never will. I present the information in a way where you can come to your own conclusions on it. 
right or wrong. That once, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get up here and, <clears throat> and convince you of why something I, t- I talk about is the truth. No, that's your job, man. And, and this kind of goes hand in hand with what I've talked about with people not wanting to contribute to my work, too. It's the same thing. Everybody wants it spoon-fed to them, and they don't want to have to do any work. They sure as don't want to have to fucking dedicate their entire lives to this, like I have. But I didn't know that. I didn't know they were blaming the fucking manipulation of the jet stream on melting Arctic ice. Well, that tells me everything I need to know. Unbelievable. (laughs) Oh, goddamn. When you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. What the fucking flying fuck, y'all? Again, you know, (laughs) listen, I don't like being right about all this stuff. I don't. I wish I was wrong. But unfortunately, all this stuff, man, again, back to what I told you about in that fucking in that five part mystery Hollywood series. And then what I've told you about over the past several months, remember what I told you about with Trump and the Russians and, and the Mountain Jews and all this stuff and how they, you know, that's really where the Aryan agenda lies. Because I, I, dude, I was talking about that 10 years ago. 2009, I started talking about the Behistun inscription in Iran and King Darius and, and the relationship of the bloodlines and how the bloodlines go from all the way back then into the people who are the rulers over the planet now. And I told you about the Bush family lineage going all the way back to Ramses II in Egypt and back to King Darius in Iran and, and what was in Persia, you know, the, the, the true Aryan people. And I told you about how they believe Trump is Cyrus the Great. And I told you long before he was even doing his Sunday service, before that even started, before it even started, I told you Trump, I'm sorry, Kanye West was involved in Ascension Cult stuff. I talked about that, and I showed what I got uncovered that in my five-part Mystery Hollywood series. This is, remember, this is before the Sunday service thing even started. And then he has his first Sunday service, and who the fuck is there at it? Katy Perry and Courtney Love. Two other well-known MK Ultra victims. And I talked about how when Kanye first got, I'm sorry, when Trump first got elected, Kanye was doing his tour. Then he flips out and cancels his tour. And then he did, he's gone. For, you don't know what he sees him for like a year. And uh, my fucking good buddy, John Brisson, uncovered a bunch of stuff on who's behind all that, which you'll, you'll be finding. We'll, we'll, I'm sure you'll be finding out about later next year once I get to my Secret Right Ultimate Edition film. But uh, Kanye West announces his first ever opera called Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, I'm going to just let that sink in there for a minute. Are you fucking shitting me? You're fucking shitting me, right? First the fucking Dairy King Darius stuff with Bush and then Cyrus the Great, the Great White Hope. And now Kanye. What or, or, is that going to be the next thing? Kanye is going to consider himself Nebuchadnezzar? The announcement arrived a few hours after West paid a visit to renowned televangelist Joel Osteen, King Zionist. Jesus Christ. At his Houston megachurch to discuss the recent commitment to Christianity. I know the God's been calling me for a long time and the devil's been distracting me for a long time. Jesus has won the victory. I told you about my arrogance and cockiness already. Now the greatest artist that God has ever created is now working for him. Delusional fucking Nebuchadnezzar. The name Nebuchadnezzar refers to a king of Babylon who was famously driven insane for seven years in the book of Daniel as he refused to acknowledge that his power, wealth, and influence were from God and not from his own making. As Fitzgerald pointed out, West mentioned the ancient Babylonian monarch during recent interviews 
with Zane Lone on Apple Music's Beats 1 while talking about his Yeezus tour. Quote, God is saying, let me take this Nebuchadnezzar type character. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. He looked at his entire kingdom and said, I did this. I stood on top of the mountain talking about Jesus, saying, I'm a God. And I had a guy dressed as a Jesus, he said. The upcoming opera will be directed by West's frequent collaborating Italian performance artist Vanessa B. Croft, who previously assisted a musician on his runaway short film and the scenography of his Yeezy fashion shows. And there it is. It's a picture, and it's got... Oh, it's just unbelievable. This is just... I, again, folks, I don't like being right about this shit. But it's funny when you motherfuckers laugh at me, even some of you who claim to be my fans, when I come out with this shit, you know, because I found it and you didn't, and there's a lot of jealousy there. There's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of what I have to deal with, folks. You wouldn't understand a lot of the fucking bullshit I have to deal with. Look, I'm just me being myself, okay? But because motherfuckers aren't me, they get jealous. And they want to try to focus in on everything except what's important, and that's the info. Or they'll, they'll, try, they'll find one fucking thing out of the millions of topics that I talk about. They'll find one thing that I don't drink the Kool-Aid on, and I don't go along with like everybody else does. And then that's what they'll focus in on, and they'll say, oh, I'm a bad guy because I don't fear monger whatever, you know, 5G, or I don't fear monger the fucking false flags on this show. I shouldn't be trusted. Ne never mind the, the other million things, you know, and the groundbreaking stuff I came out with years before anybody ever got onto it. I mean, listen, when I first started telling people in 2008 that there was a new right wing movement that was brewing up that was then connected to Ron Paul and all that stuff that didn't have anything to do with Bush and was going over the next decade to try and instigate a civil war to depopulate blacks and minorities and everything else, people laughed at me. And I told them it was the CMP stuff. People laughed at me. And now I'm laughing at them. I just, I don't even know what it is. I'm speechless. You think all this is a fucking coincidence? No, listen. This is this now we know what they wanted with Kanye. I was always wondering that. What do they want with Kanye? And then his programming broke down. Remember he went to the to the uh, the White House and he was showing uh Trump all that stuff on his phone. And then a couple of a little while later his programming broke down. He was like, fuck Trump, fuck, fuck that nigga. I ain't fucking with him no more. And then, you, you, then he disappeared again. Just because they sent him to another fucking, they had to re, his programming broke down. They had to send him back to the fucking reprogramming camp and fucking juice him up again. And then he came back out, and then that's when he started doing his Sunday service and all this stuff, man. They gotta have a way. Listen, these guys are not fucking around. This is not a joke. I've been researching this stuff for over a decade. These people believe, these people that are the bloodline descendants of the people that go back to the ancient civilizations, ancient Mesopotamia, all that stuff. These bloodline people that have stayed in power to this day, they believe because of what is, if you, go, you can go and look at what's inscribed. By the way, do you know the Behistun inscription says that it is, it was inscribed on that rock in the middle of nowhere in the desert by Zeus? You know Zeus is also, it's just like you have different people, you have Quetzalcoatl is also uh, Toth and all that. You know, Zeus was also Inki, right? So essentially, that rock in Iran called the Behistun inscription says on it, when it was translated, that it was inscribed by Zeus. Zeus also being Inki. And it says in there that all the bloodline descendants of King Darius will rule over these tw 23 lands, and it's 23 lands that all have weird names that, that are not valid today. And when you go and research that, lo and behold, it just happens to be Iraq, Iran, Mesopotamia, the whole cradle of civilization, that whole area, and it just happens to be where all the oil is. Saudi Arabia, all of it. And it says, <clears throat> my bloodline descendants will rule over these 23 lands indefinitely forever. It's the divine right to rule. 
And I told you 10 years ago on this broadcast, this is exactly why we, we had 9-11. This is exactly why we've had the ongoing wars in the Middle East. These people are cl- want to reclaim, and that's exactly what's going on today with Trump and with the Russian stuff and all this, and why Iran's being ra- ratcheted back up. They want to reclaim their land for what they believe are the true Aryan race. That's why Hitler was going around looking for the Aryans, and he never found them. That's why he wasn't really looking in the right fucking spot. He got close, but he didn't find the whole enchilada. And Kanye is being used to bring black people on board with this agenda. Because that's been the biggest thing that's been standing in their way. And now, what do they do? Well, you know, we got to (laughs) fucking, we got to give them something. You know, (laughs) Nebuchadnezzar II was actually the, the more uh, I don't know what the word is no, I wouldn't know what it would say important but there's two different Nebuchadnezzars by the way they're associating uh, Kanye specifically with Nebuchadnezzar the first but I guess they're like look we gotta throw this motherfucker a bone you know he thinks he's a god we're gonna give him a god name you know fucking let him run with it you know let him believe it. As long as we get the black folks on board with this. I don't care what you are. Black, white, brown, yellow, doesn't matter. Don't buy into the, any of this shit, no matter what color you are. Those fucking ugly ass fucking clothes he wear, he, sh- he sells. I wouldn't pay two cents for that shit or be caught dead in it. Much to us, $2,000 for a pair of Yeezy sneakers. I mean... God damn, if you're going to charge that much or something, at least make them decent looking. Black people don't even want to wear that shit. You know who wears that shit? Dumb white folks with too much money. That's who wears that shit. Black folks don't want to wear that shit, by and large. I'm not saying there's no black people that wear Yeezys. Of course there are. But what I'm saying is, by and large, it's people with not enough brains and too much money that are majority white buying that crap. Meh, <laughs> meh. Now keep fucking buying it, you sheep. Keep fucking buying it. Keep drinking that. Keep sipping that fucking Masonic nut of Jobulon. Keep sucking it. Keep sucking it down. Keep buying it and keep laughing at motherfuckers like me. Uh, that's all I got. I got to get back to work. I, I've got uh, more stuff. I'll, I'll be back tomorrow with another show and get into more of the news I've got here for you tomorrow ladies and gentlemen uh again i appreciate it i just i I, all of you out there that truly get me and get what i've been trying to do here all these years and understand it know where i'm going with this i just can't thank you enough Uh, i I really i I love and appreciate each and every one of you because uh, you're the reason i do this and there's not many of us there really isn't there's not many of us but that doesn't matter we got to stay tight we got to stay focused and uh, keep our eye on the prize and remember just why any of us got involved in, in, in any of this. Me, you, or any of us. We want the truth. And you want, we don't want to be run over, not only by the liars and the people who are running these agendas, but by the people also who are running the counter intelligence operations who are posing as truthers and truth tellers and are really just as much the enemy as these people whose names we know like you know the Rockefellers and Kissingers and Rothschilds and all that they're not the only enemy so um I've dedicated my life to this I'll never quit but uh, none of it's possible without you so again guys let's get some fucking money rolling that kitty let's get a war chest going on here so I can continue to focus on what's important which is kicking these motherfuckers teeth right down their throats that's what i was put here to do that's why i was put on this planet and uh i'm grateful every day that i found my calling and the reason why i was put here and this is it but it's not possible without you i love you guys we'll see you tomorrow take care folks this is josh reeves and i'm here to tell you about a fantastic website fixyourgut.com FixYourGut.com can help you take control of your overall health. Are you sick and tired of suffering from indigestion, acid reflux, bloating, or abdominal pain? Do you run to the bathroom either all the time or hardly ever at all? 
Do you forget things often or have trouble concentrating? Are you depressed or anxious? Do you have IBD or SIBO? Digestive disorders are increasing in frequency because of our toxic, laden, fast-paced world. There are billions of microorganisms that live in your intestinal tract that have more to say about your health than almost anything else. Learn how to make sure your gut has more of the right organisms to improve your health and enhance your life. FixYourGut.com has over 200 free blog articles, and it's one of the most valuable resources on the planet to improve your overall health and well-being. Search either Fix Your Gut or We've Read the Documents on YouTube for the latest health and conspiracy information as well. You can also purchase John Brisson's book, Fix Your Gut, or get personal one-on-one health coaching to help get you back to living your life happy and healthy. Visit FixYourGut.com the ultimate source for all things digestive health.